Hello there and welcome to another episode of the Total Water Polo podcast. We're back in our beautiful studio in Zagreb and we will bring you a very special guest shortly. But just before we start, don't forget to like, subscribe to this podcast and follow us on all of our platforms. There will be uh, some links in the show notes for that. And if you do appreciate what we do, and of course uh, you're able to, please do consider donating and supporting us on our Patreon account. We appreciate that massively and we will also leave a link in the show notes for that um, so now for to introduce a player that doesn't really need a, an introduction he's the best player in the world as voted for unanimously by you guys the fans the world's top coaches and players a very warm welcome to Gogo Zelanki now before we start I believe this is yours Hello. This is uh, you. your award. Welcome to the podcast and congratulations. Thank you very much. This is your award. Thank you. It's uh, been nicely made, so there we are. <laughs> You've really, really, Thank you. really well deserved, um, I think. Nice. <laughs> um, so first and foremost, um, we want to talk about this award. Um, I don't need to highlight how prestigious it is, as I've said. Players, coaches, um, every player wants to be recognized by their peers, their players and their coaches. Um, so let's reflect on, on last year. Um, now we're in 2024. How, how do you reflect on, on an amazing year for you? Thank you very much and I'm greeting everyone. So the last year was nearly perfect, like uh, with the club, with the national team, like, like my whole year as personally, with the family, it was uh, amazing and I will never forget this year. Especially with this award, it really means a lot. I saw the, the players who won this before and uh, to be in this group, it's really honorable. I, I always dream about to be the best in the world. Uh, but now I need to compete against to, to win it this year. But back to the last year, it was, it was really amazing how we how I and we with the with the two teams went forward uh, to the game especially with the Pareco I, I joined there this is my third year and uh, when I joined and I get to used to their mentality it's really really amazing how they they going forward and how they they reach the the finals with this they want to beat everyone don't care who is coming in front of you you need to be better at that moment and with that mentality i try to be in the national team too i try to talk to the other players to be like this to to never mind if if somebody is maybe better than us we can we can beat them together uh, and I think after years, in the, especially in the national team, we have we have a good uh, relationship inside the, the team with everyone. And I think this was the the decision made thing that uh, that we have a very good connection, and we we now we can fight for each other. What was in Proreco, what was like a normal thing mm -hmm. to fight and uh, to to not care who scores the goal or who is the, the best player. Uh, we only care that we need to win. And, uh, and I think we can, and I can help a lot to, to get this mentality in the, in the national team. So we can, we did this, like we went to the World Championship to Fukuoka, like, like this mentality, to, to not just be in the top four and be in the semi-final or we went to like we wanted to win that one so it was a it, it was a very 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 nice like how we and me myself to to get this mentality because before that i was not like this we can we will speak yeah. about this. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in, uh, in you talking about mentality and we will come back to that. But just mm -hmm. last year, I in the most perfect of years, is there one moment that I think stands above the rest? Was it that Champions League in Belgrade? Was it the World Championships? Or was it something that we don't, we don't necessarily know about uh, the highlight of your year? 
Uh, maybe it's it's a hard because the Champions League was was very really different, especially with the, with that four minute exclusion, and we made that four minutes like uh, like we nearly won that <laughs> that four minutes man down, and uh, and it was really amazing feeling that we handled that three games so amazingly that everybody told me in, in Hungary and and everywhere that. It was too easy for us, and I said that it, it was really hard. We just trained so hard, we practiced and focused so hard that maybe it looked easier, but it was it was very hard. And uh, and on the other hand, the World Championship was like totally different because every game was so hard. Even when we played the Croatia in the group stage, we won by one goal or maybe two. I, I don't remember. And then the quarterfinal, semi-final, final was was so close game, and uh, and I felt like we were lucky, and we we won because we wanted more to win, so with the with the courage, with the, with the, with fire, we can we can move a little bit forward by quarter by quarter, and uh, so the two teams was like totally different and, and that's why it's maybe it's so special that uh, that this Fukuoka before that I didn't thought about uh, that we, we went to this Los Angeles World Cup and we were at the end at the I don't remember which place we finished I think it was it was fourth because fourth. there was that crazy USA game yes, where you had to come yes, back after yes, an hour yes, and yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and uh, and after that we had we went back to Hungary and we had a tough week because we saw that the tactics are not good. We saw there is uh, some problems in the in the team and we we handled it pretty pretty well and pretty smooth. And uh, we arrived and I felt like we are maybe we are not ready. And uh, and how we we went game by game we went to to better levels mm -hmm. and at the end it was so special because uh, we 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 leveled up so much in that one in the two weeks it was it was an amazing feeling and uh, and how we won the the quarter final the semi final with Manhead's last goal it was uh, it was a very lucky moment mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so it's hard to to decide which was the the best moment, I think this whole whole year, this whole travel, like how we lived the Proreco and how we lived these two weeks in in Fukuoka was uh, was this best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a real sign of champions. I think when you can <coughs> reinvent yourself, you can see that you're not on the level. And you said about going back with to Hungary and reinventing yourself and, and taking yourself to the next level and it was it was amazing um, something you said at the beginning of this interview you, you said um, I always dreamed to be the best player in the world um, you were born and grew up in Eger um, a city in, in sort of north, north of, of Hungary could you have ever imagined that um, as that as that young child that you would you would be a world champion you'd be three or four times Champions League winner and um, that you'd be be recognized as the best player in the world. Could you believe that that was going to happen, even if you wanted it? I, I dreamed about it. That was my... Uh, I grew up on the three times Olympic champions. I, I always... Uh, my idol was Benedek Tibor. And, uh, and I always dreamed about to be an Olympic champion. I, I don't know, this world champion and European champion was not in the in the dream <laughs> just only the olympic one but of course it's it's like it's like the same it was in my head that i want to be the the champion but i feel like i i need this olympic gold medal to to reach the my dreams but but yeah when i was when i was younger i always care about uh, i i had to score the most goals i wanted to be the the best player and you know when we had these little tournaments in Eger or or in Hungary, 
the, we always get these little trophies, the best player, the best goal scorer, the best goalkeeper. And I always wanted to be one of that. And uh, it was a very interesting journey because uh, I didn't have a good relationship with, with my teammates because I wanted to be the one to score the goal. So maybe I had more shots that yeah. <laughs> I should do. And, uh, and when I met with the, when I grow a little bit older and I, and I went to the national team first time and I met with, with Benedek Tibor. He said, and I told this to him, that uh, he asked me what's, what's my biggest goal in, in my career. And I said, I want to be the best, the best player. And he said, it's, it's very nice and everything. And uh, it's a good thing. But you, you can be the best when you, but when you don't care with this. Because when he was young, he had the same problems. He, he wanted to be the best, the goal scorer, the, the best. And he won the, the Olympic medals and uh, he won better players when he realized that more important the, the team victory than the, the personal mm -hmm. trophies. And after that, I, I, I realized that and I, and I want to learn from his mistake was, was the same, my mistake that and now in the in the last years, when I start my professional career, I uh, I think about always this that I don't care that I win an award or no. I just want to win. If I don't score any goal on the two weeks Olympics or World Championship, but we won, I'm I'm happy. I'm good. I'm good to do some assists, to do some defense. So he really changed my my mentality in this. And, and is that is that when it changed, or how long did it take to actually make that uh, a reality? Because you can say that, but deep down, you know you want to score, you know you want to be on on that podium at the end with the MVP. But did it take time for you to actually for that advice to sink in, or because your hero had said it, it was like yes, okay, well, yes. <laughs> to be saying I have to do it. No, I. I I feel like I, I remember this moment like like exactly that we sat on the in the hotel room we had a practice with the national team we uh, before the maybe it was before my first uh, national team against Georgia and we we speak about everything and he he told me this question and I think after this this conversation I had instantly I had this okay now I, I need to do what I what I become to a better player to not focusing on myself to focusing mm -hmm. on the team and uh, and it will it will be good mm -hmm. uh, it, I, after I, I realized that maybe it needs some time to and, and do you think do you think that's what this last year has been because lots of people will say uh, Zelanki, maybe he did something different a year or two ago, but do you actually think uh, reaching this pinnacle uh, as being voted the best player in the world, do you think that's actually a culmination of all those years gradually building up rather than just one thing that you changed? Yeah, I, I, think, I think for sure. I, uh, I always thought and I, and I believed it that you need to, you need to do everything, every step. Like you can be the best player just like I want to be and uh, don't do the trainings and stuff like this. No, you need to like really step by step. You need to learn to swim first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And after after water polo practice and after you need to go on the ladder to higher and higher. And for me, the last step, I think this was to, to Proreco sign me. That step was after I, I had so much, uh, how I say, I, uh, I don't get this word. <laughs> uh, so, so much self confidence yeah, yeah. After, after they signed me because I was like, okay, my, my other dream was to play in Proreco because Benedek played in Proreco lots of, lots of years. And, and I dreamed about it, and, and when they called me, um, it was an interesting sign because I had one more year with the Ferencvaros, but in the contract I had like uh, 
like I can leave the club for a foreigner country for another country mm -hmm. and uh, and when the Pareko called me I was like I, I need to I need to do it it was like a hard decision but it was no question like you know it was hard to to leave the Ferenc Faros and uh, and everything behind but I know I know I, I had to do it mm -hmm. and when I when I signed there I went there I felt like this mentality what I told you and I liked it so much that how they train they trained so much harder than the, the club where I uh, played before so so this one last this is the like the not the last step but then uh, because I need more step to yeah, to get there to get to be better and better but this was the step I I had to I had to make to be now the the best mm -hmm. and you obviously have played for some of Europe's top teams um, in Hungary and also um, now in Pro Reco um, it's really interesting that you, you talked about the mentality in, in, in Pro Reco um, how would you contrast and compare um, the atmosphere in, in Italy in Pro Reco with maybe with Fradi or, or Ega or, or Solnok or, or a team like this uh, how do you compare sort of the culture around the club, the culture around the league, and, and water polo in general? Yeah, it, I I think the the biggest difference was like how they they practicing, like especially the the water polo uh, elements, mm -hmm. like the man up, man down, like just to how to describe it, like. If you want to do a serious practice in, in Hungary, I, I didn't want to say any wrong about no, no, the no. Hungarian clubs. I just can describe it easier, maybe, that if you want to do a serious, like, man up, man down training, you need to do, like, okay, we have 10 man down, 10 man up, and who, who lose needs to pay something or you know, like, or do a 100 meter butterfly or something. <laughs> yeah. Like in Proreco, you don't need to say. They will do 100% every time, totally focusing on what you need to do. So it's like, it's so much for my first like half year, it was so hard. I was so tired because I had to focus on every training because every training was like, like the hardest games in the Proreco the trainings are more are, are harder so much harder than, than the games like really and uh, and when you are arrived for your biggest game like in the Champions League final it looks normal mm -hmm. to be on that that level in mentally on your head and your physically that you you know you you prepare this for the whole year mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and I try to, to tell this to the Hungarian guys that when we need practicing the national team and I, and I saw they, they may be not so serious, that come on guys, you need to do it first, and then you, you can do it on the games. You spoke, you spoke to the, the peop some of your teammates ab about yes. this sort of thing? Yeah, yeah especially with the, with the young kids, mm -hmm. because, I, because the older guys maybe know this. They, they, they had enough experience that, but I think uh, for the young guys need some, some advice about this, that, that you need to get the, self, the, the confidence in the trainings, not in the games. But because of course they, they 100% on the games, they're focusing, they are uh, doing everything hard. But you, you first you need to do it on the on the practice mm -hmm. because it will it will give you the 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 steps that you yeah, that you have to make. What's the most difficult thing about playing for Pro Reco? Is it what you just mentioned, just the relentless training day in day out? Is it the pressure or is it some something else? Yeah, the other different thing is the is the pressure. I think it's. Uh, you really can feel that it's win, winning or, or nothing. Like if if you are second, even in the Champions League, it's 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 a lose. So they they don't care about second place. And the other thing that when we won the first, it's uh, Italian Cup, then the Championship, that uh, we won the 
crap and everybody was so happy it was my first year after I realized it's normal but in my first year we won the cup and everybody was so happy and everything and next day we had a practice and the Felugo, Mauricio Felugo, the yeah. president came down and he said like okay it's it's very good that you won the cup but like it's over like not not nobody cares but now it's it's over it's the past you need to won the championship when we won the championship okay good congratulations but you need to won the champions league so it was like like you know this this continuously pressure on you that okay you won this is like the minimum level that you won the cup and the championship now you need to won the champions league and uh, and yeah you can feel that on every player there they're really nervous you can see on the practices there are some small fights between the players mm -hmm. because they want to first they want to be in the team because there is a few more players some two or three players will uh, will outside of the first team so first you need to be in the team and uh, you need to do the practice well and I think the main uh, part of this Pareco I mean I don't know before because I just arrived with, yeah. uh, with Sandro yeah but I think Sandro is uh, is an amazing coach and uh, yeah. I wanted to ask you about Sanjo. I wanted to ask what his uh, what his genius is. Uh, sort of what 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 impact has he had on you? What areas of of your game has he taken to the next level? So yeah, so Sandro is like uh, I think he's really good in, uh, in connection like with his Pareko mentality. I mean, he played there. He he knows what's up there. But but I spoke with uh, with Luca Launcher that we asked him that he was like the same as the coach but because we, we didn't know him as a as a player and he said that yeah he was the same like so focusing silence but like uh, like everything is is uh, is water polo when, when we train when we are on the training it's like like everything just just water polo he didn't say you nothing twice so you need to focus he says something and you need to do it immediately. Our trainings are so, like, effectful or yeah. like, like we we can do a one hour fifteen minutes training, but it feels like a two hour training. So it's like little warm up and immediately some practice, then doing some some hard stuff. So it's uh, it's very good, like the build the the training build ups. And and I think he has this this good matchup with with this Proeco style, and uh, and he's just like a water polo genius. Like I'm sure everybody know how good player he was, and he knows very well that what we need to do against some some teams, some tactics, or he know about other players that. He do this shot or that shot or, or as a center he doing like stuff like this or this and he I know I'm sure that he he watching so many videos and uh, preparing so good that uh, that uh, we are like prepared for for everything and the trainings we going down and uh, and with this mentality we can practice this so good like we don't need to play against like just to say like bar we trained against Barceloneta in this year and uh, we can do this practice matchup between us and I think it's it's very very good for for Echo that you have so many good players that you can play against yourself mm -hmm. that it's like uh, like a very good yeah. enemy to yeah. play yeah and we can do this all year and uh, and he he uses this so good that we have games against each other so many times, and we play like like games like it's a championship final. Like you don't need to put any any price that the winner gets something or yeah. stuff. Yeah. If he he did 
it sometimes he put on price but it was too like much what? Like it was we in the first year before the italian cup i think he was really nervous because it was his yeah first cup and he he said that uh, tomorrow we're gonna play a game and the loser will pay the the dinner after the the cup we go team dinner and the loser will play everything and it was like like the hardest game of that year everybody went totally crazy like uh, really like it was maybe somebody had some scratch it was yeah. blood and but who won did you have to pay no, in the end i i paid i paid uh, I, I lost but it didn't matter <laughs> if you won the italian cup in the end yeah 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 um yeah it's just like really crazy how they can even practice mm -hmm. on the game it was like a champions league game final mm -hmm. I wanted, I wanted to pick up on something you said. You talked about Falugo coming down after each cup and saying, okay, well done, and now on to the next one. Championship, okay, great, now on to the next one. Um, I think this is relevant for you now. You've won Champions Leagues, you've won National Championships, you've won Cups, you've won Champions Leagues, all the rest of it, European Championships, World Championships. You said that last year was a near-perfect year, and so really the missing piece of the jigsaw, as you said, is, is the Olympics. Um, is that what is motivating you to to continue in the sport? Yeah, it's, I, I can say it's sometimes really hard, especially with this mentality that you don't have any time to 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 be in the in the moment. Like you you have okay, you have one night to celebrate, but after you you have to go to practice and. Uh, Okay, maybe this this year it's it's crazy because we have the European World Championship, everything, Olympics in the summer. We are lucky that we are not playing in the European. The few Hungarian guys who is older, but uh, but yeah, it's sometimes it's really hard. This this continuously just go practice for the next thing after. Okay, you won that, but like like nobody cares you need to do continue mm -hmm. the practicing it's really hard but uh, but i try to to focusing only the the next step and for me the the next step is is not the not the olympics first first now i i want to do the trainings in hungary like like totally effective like i i want to gain some muscle i want mm -hmm. to be faster so this is the next step after we going the the world championship and it will be it will be like a very difficult moment i think for us because uh, if we not gonna win we need to stay in the same relationship with with everyone like mm -hmm. like now and now we are working with this with the psychologies that that's uh, to be the better team because we re realize that even if somebody is better than you, your teammate can can help you, and, and mm -hmm. we really f need to focus on the team team effort. That that really we are going together. So if I see the big picture, it can be too much, especially this year, World Championship, back to Reco, Cup, Champions League, Champions League, and then the Olympics if it's, it's just too much mm -hmm. so step by step and to continue this sport it's like uh, i like this i like this this lifestyle that it can gives me i like to live in in reco it's <laughs> it's, it's amazing place. it's yeah, a lovely. peaceful place now i have a two-year-old son and it's it's a very very nice to to live there and uh, but who does he support Italy or Hungary when they play <laughs> sorry sorry if Italy were to play Hungary in a match tomorrow at water polo who would he support uh, I, I support Hungary of course <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> so so this is my my motivation to to be an Olympic championship mm -hmm. step by step but now I can uh, I can say that my motivation is play as long in Reco as I can. But is I think it's not easy because of the the pressure and the training uh, 
the high level of the training you need to really like every day on your max level on 100 percent it's not uh, not easy to be there but uh, but I, I i like this yeah I, uh, and now i i don't i i have i have my plans for the for the future i can see i can go back to to hungary but but i will go back to hungary as my plans if i can be in the reco as long as i can to be in hungary to maybe go back to to Eger, my my hometown and help to that club to be again one of the best mm -hmm. because when i played there we were we won the championship and now they are they are not the best they were very good in the few years ago until few years ago so this is my other motivation to to help them and my plan so i have i have this in my mind but uh, you know i good it's it just a plan it sounds <laughs> like we can keep you in the sport which is something we're really uh, are grateful for uh, i just want to change the subject just slightly back to the the olympics again and then, and then we can and, and talk about some other stuff um obviously you're fortunate enough that you're not playing in these euros you get the rest along with you and, and several others and the team that we see in, in zagreb um is a really really young team but my god they're they're amazing right yes, they are yes, yes. they're incredible um it must give you a lot of confidence that you can rotate so heavily and still have a team that is is is, is so great but what i really wanted to to ask you all these young players um is it possible for you to pick maybe one and maybe not the obvious ones that we we all know maybe the some that we don't know that that you see training a lot who 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 do you think of, of those can really be extra extra special and maybe receive this this award in, in five years time or ten years yes they they won the the world championship in the u19 or u20 i don't yeah. know but they they won the world championship and there's lots of players from them so they are really young and they have the future and and yes we were lucky that we get the qualification for the olympics and uh, we were lucky that we can manage this that we have backup guys who can play now and yes they play, play really well so i i feel curious that who can be in the in the olympic team and and i can see on the other guys that it can be a big competition on some sports that who can be in that in the team which one is very good because the same that in Proreco that it gives the the practice on a higher level because you need to compete on the on the training as well and uh, who can be the the best player in a few years i can see the future in in Vince Vigvari Vince i i like him he's a very like uh, a badass guy he can if i can say that mm -hmm. that he's not afraid of anyone he's doing his best all the time and he's very talented he's got uh, he's got a very good technique he needs to to play a lot and everything but but he can he can be good uh I know I, I just can see now that Tatra Tatra is is very good as well. Amazing player. Yes. Amazing. Uh, this this two is maybe my my favorite. <laughs> mm -hmm. I I like them. I like them very much. So they they practice with us, but uh I I I think Vince can he was in the in Fukuoka too. Mm -hmm. He maybe he didn't play so much but uh, he was very useful when he, he played against Spain and he scored the goal in in the semi-final mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't know Tatra has uh, has an option to be to be in there but but I can see maybe if it's not Olympic but after the Olympics I'm 100% he will be yeah. there maybe before the Olympics roads uh, is more like believing in the world championship team especially after after this good uh, good two weeks uh, but after this i'm sure that it it will change a lot and they will play more and more and i will be the the old guy <laughs> in, the, in the in the national team so and how does that make you feel 
I feel I feel good, and, and especially after this pro echo experience, mm -hmm. I I feel like I if I can give this mentality, just a little of it uh, of this, uh, they can be a very very good player, and they be they can say see this that uh, they need to play outside of of Hungary mm -hmm. because it's give it give me so much. That it's different world and and everything different uh, style water polo style. Mm -hmm. So I think they maybe not now because they are too young. Yeah. But in a few years they they need to. to That's really interesting. This. That's yeah. really interesting because I think Hungarians have everything they need in in Hungary, right? You know they I've, it, and so it, it's hard for them to, sometimes to to yes. say to say no. Uh, um, uh, to, uh, and and stay and not go abroad. That's what that's what I mean. So, uh, but you would you would recommend playing playing in Italy, but anywhere else? Or do you see do you see the game being benef uh, beneficial to their game? Maybe going to somewhere else. I mean, we've seen a few Hungarians go yeah. to France, and uh, you know, or not I, so much. I think the the good thing is Hungary that the league is is very strong. Mm -hmm. This first for group okay the Ferenc Varos is, is over everyone but but after after them there is four or five teams who can who can be in the top top two, top mm -hmm. three. So it's very big competition. And uh, and yes how how you said that in, in Hungary it's uh, now it's a perfect like uh, it's perfect for, for every yeah. every level. There is so professional clubs with uh, good gyms, good swimming pools. Like you can get everything. But for me, the good thing about that that I, I came out this this bubble, you know, yeah. like especially if you are if you are a good Hungarian player after time, if you are getting older, you will be in this bubble that they try to protect you of everything, mm -hmm. and maybe you can be lazy in this comfortable t bubble <laughs> I, I don't say and I can say any word so so you need to break out of your comfort zone to be so a you, better player you actually think it's important that you yes. you actually do that not it's not just something you'd recommend it's something that you think should yes. should be happening okay interesting um, we're going to move on to some sort of finishing questions that some people have uh, have come up with um, and the first one I, I really wanted to read was from Nicholas Prosciutti, he said, "Is it true that you cook a carbonara risotto?" Yeah, I'm cooking perfect carbonara risotto, and I know for the Italians it's like uh, it's a, it's a very bad thing because carbonara is only with pasta. But I tried carbonara pizza, and it was very good. <laughs> Pineapple on pizza. <laughs> yeah, know, but they are growing crazy. Thing. Yeah, for this food, then it's like. Uh, they are too crazy about this, but but yeah, and, and uh, we speak with uh, Nicolas. If they won the European Championship, we make uh, goulash together in Recco. So good luck, Nicolas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you can ruin his <laughs> national <laughs> yeah. dish. Uh, he can ruin yours. Sorry, <laughs> national dish. Um, okay. Um, what's the thing in in short that you love most about our sport? Sorry, sorry. What what's the thing? In short, I, that you love most about our sport, about water polo, I like the the community. Like uh, like we know each other, we are friends with each other, with the other teams that that uh, we have a good relationship and uh, and I just like like the sport about this. Uh, I don't know. I, I grew up. I, I always wanted to be a water polo player especially in Agar, it's a big history of water polo and in Hungary. I just like like this this tough sports that mm -hmm. you need to you need to compete in a, in the water with your team. I like I like that it's so much team sport that you need good teammates to be to be the best. I mean, uh, I I was lucky to be in the Proreco and the national team. The these two team is now the the best. You need uh, you need a very good team. You need a very good connection with these people to be on your top level. To not just self confidence, but you get confidence from them that they're trusting you. 
So it's uh, I like I like the stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, conversely, what's what's the thing you you dislike the most about our sport? I dislike the most that I think everybody knows uh, about this me that I dislike the like not the referees, but how they are doing the the referee stuff. I think it's it's too much pressure maybe on the on the referees. They uh, they have too much in their hands. They can decide too easily one game with mm -hmm. maybe not they wanted to cheat cheat just for the other team. Just something. a mistake. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And it can it can happen. They are they are humans, they can do mistakes. I just see that of course it has any sports. Even in football there is some mm -hmm. some mis mis big mistakes, but maybe in water polo it's more more usual or maybe like uh, a four minutes exclusion what was not a four minutes or or stuff like this that uh, it's hard to to see uh, when i when i watching a game outside of the water it's i can i i feel myself that i can decide that it was an exclusion or a contra fault or yeah because it's so much fighting mm -hmm. i don't know what's the what would be the the options for this? But uh, I don't like this. Um, your views on VAR? You think it's a, a good thing? You think the sport should have it? Yeah, I think like with the with this with the video referee, they can they can uh, made the the referee's mistake they like correct like it. Correct yeah. it. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, but. They need to they need to improve this this mm -hmm. technique. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And 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 even if they they are looking the the videos and and after it can be a, after this still challenging to to say that it was a goal or not. So it helping a lot, but they need to improve it. Mm. We got a question for, from a lot of people along these lines about what is the most. Um, important moment of your career and we've got a list and you have to pick one so you can't yeah. you can't okay. you have to pick one um, your professional debut with Vega <laughs> uh, your debut with the national team uh, your first Champions League win uh, winning your Olympic bronze winning the European Championships and winning the World Championships which of those would you say is the most important I think the most important now, but my first thought was the European Championship in Hungary mm -hmm. because it was in in Budapest in the Duna Arena, and it was amazing. Like we won the with penalty with so many, so I don't know how many thousand people, but it was it was an amazing feeling that uh, we had the chance to win a medal, a gold medal in in at home. So the other things was very nice and and very but but that that one when I heard that that thing uh, I, I know this is this is the answer because it was just an amazing feeling that we can win a gold medal at home really now if I think about that it's just amazing okay this next question is a bit silly but it's it's sort <laughs> of, um, one word answer yes or no would you swap all of those for an Olympic gold medal or would you keep them and not get an Olympic gold? Yes. You'd keep them? Or no, swap? I, I, I'd swap them. You'd swap? I'd swap them. Interesting, interesting. It shows how important this yes. is. I think I'd swap them. Yeah. Everyone because wants to be up on that wall, Alfred Hayosh, with yeah. their name. I think, I think I'd swap them because, uh, because, you know, the Olympics is just for four year. And uh, I don't know. Maybe I have this and maybe one more because on the third one I will be really old. I don't know, I can I can meet that. So maybe I have two two more chance to So you're cheating. To win. Yeah. You're cheating, you're taking oh, the goal and think, I'm thinking mathematically that maybe if I'm swapping and then I still have chance to win another European and World Championship. But but I think that just the the Olympic gold is is the top top of the top mm -hmm. so it's like especially in, in Hungary it's all about the, the Olympic winners 
they mm. they're really legends so it defines a career really yes. it shouldn't but it, it, it yeah. ultimately yeah, it does, yeah, yeah, it does. But it's, if you win you are you are something mm -hmm. uh, very quickly the best swimming pool you've ever played in your favorite place to play it's uh, in the Margaret Island mm -hmm. it's uh, that that unique pool especially if they build uh, the stands for it yeah. just amazing and we had a few questions along along these lines uh, a few people asked um, how much do you think it helped you in your career to be left-handed do you think this it's gave uh, you opportunities that you might not have otherwise have got it's a good question because I think for for starts it's, it's helping a lot because there is less left-handed and I know I get I was I was talented and, and everything but I know I get so many extra help from the coaches because they saw that I'm a good left-handed I can be a very good player so at the start it's it's very 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 helpful that maybe you get uh, an extra extra eye on you because of this uh, yeah it's like you are lucky because there is less less left-handed so it's I'm sure it's helping mm -hmm. okay um, so we've got one last question um, you spoke earlier about Ega about maybe going back there uh, do you think you'd go back there maybe um, maybe to play but after your career is finished do you think you would coach yes I, I'm totally I can see myself as a as a coach uh, and in my plans I had I had this that I can I can go back I can see that I play a few years I, I know how it's going there everything and uh, and yes it's maybe I have a few more options but it's in the it's in my plans that I, I wanted to be a coach and if you were a coach who who would you say your style would be most like Jean Varga Sandro Sukno I would be another like Sandro you'd like to be like I like I like to be it's it's not easy but because he's really like uh, how he's seeing the water polo it's really hard but I like that he's uh, he's quiet but so effective and how he he had the trainings there so so yes I I, I would dream about uh, to be as a coach as Sandro don't we all um, Gergo thank you so much for for your time today and I just want to say one more time on behalf of uh, Total Water Polo and all the fans and people that have voted congratulations on your award it was um, very well deserved and we hope to see you, you. playing again for Hungary and in, in Paris and hopefully your your dream can come true and I just want to thank you guys for staying with us whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify and as I said at the beginning if you could like subscribe follow uh, wherever you're getting this podcast we would appreciate that massively and we hope to see you next time on the Total Water Podcast.